Hello everyone, my name is Han Song Bei, and I'm the Director of Product Architecture for Riverbed Cascade. So I wanted to start out by saying that um, most of you may know me from SharkFest, presentations that I've made at SharkFest in the past. And, and if you haven't, um, you know, you can Google for SharkFest, Wireshark SharkFest, and there's a lot of informative presentations, hardcore training, etc. So there's material readily available and you'll see that uh, I've made uh, SharkFest presentations in the past and hopefully you'll find it useful. And one of the feedback that I got was that people wanted to be able to have kind of a quick hit and run type of training or presentation, not necessarily deep dive uh, packet analysis, uh, not yet initially anyway, um, but uh, kind of a, you know, how do I start? Where do I start? Uh, how do I get going with protocol analysis, etc.? So I thought I would have an ongoing blog, if you will, and we're going to start out slow and eventually build on our foundation and get to the, um, the hardcore protocol analysis piece uh, towards the end. So why don't we get going? This should look very familiar uh, to anyone who's ever used Wireshark, but I wanted to point out a couple of different things and why I have my configuration set up in a particular manner. Okay, so the first thing you'll see here is that I have a column here called Delta. I also have a column here called Cumulative Bytes. And notice that I don't have the normal coloring rule turned on. Okay, so this is a personal preference. It's not the right way. There's uh, some people prefer looking at it with all the different coloring schemes built in. Uh, I find it somewhat distracting, so I tend to turn them off. Okay, um, so this blog is going to be about uh, about five to seven minutes long. It's it's meant for kind of a quick hit, uh, power tips, if you will. And uh, so let's get started. So the first thing I do every time I have to jump on a new machine and install Wireshark, there are a couple of things that I do immediately uh, right out of the box. The first thing is to click on Edit Preferences. Let's drag that into the view. And let's go to the name resolution, and I turn off uh, transport name resolution. Right? I don't care to see the default TCP port names. Uh, I like to see it just in numbers, because in most cases the default uh, the naming doesn't apply to most enterprises or uh, in-country applications. Okay. Now the next thing you'll see is the columns here. So this is kind of my default view of Wireshark. The first thing that I added was Delta Time is displayed and I also have cumulative bytes Okay, as you can see here. So how do you add something new? Well if you have a default installation you'll notice that the cumulative bytes is missing. Okay, So all you have to do is just click on the Add button and you'll notice there's a new column here and you can call this whatever you want. And in the field, instead of the number, you want you can pick and choose what you like. Okay. In my case, it was cumulative bytes, um, but maybe here you want to see uh, UTC date and time. Uh, in that case, let's just make, change this to UTC, for example. Okay. And if you click on OK, you'll notice that I have a new column off to the right that has the UTC information. Okay. It's simple as that. Um, and let me go ahead and go to my preferences for the column, put it back into the view, and I'll go ahead and delete this for now. Okay. So why do I set these up the way I do? The first thing I do is the delta times are very important. Those of you that have seen my shark presentation, uh, I almost always sort based on the delta time, and I scroll to the end to see if there are any delta times that are repeating or that kind of catch my eye. In this case, uh, not so much, right? So we have a three second delta uh, for some get, and there's a five second delta, but it's only two, right? So I'm, I don't know that I'm going to worry about it too long, too much. Um, and I, as I scroll through here, nothing really jumps out per se. Okay, what I'm looking for in a delta column is, are things like 200 millisecond delays, 100 millisecond delays, or perhaps 75 millisecond delays. 
these are the typical delayed act type numbers and I'm interested in finding them quickly okay so um, I always and that's the reason why I always add the delta column okay the other thing is that um, I add not only do I add different col columns but I also have different profiles how do you get to the profiles so click under edit and configuration profiles and it's shift control a so that's how I always get to my um, panel I hit control shift a and I have four that I almost always create okay, the first one is what I call the default and, and remember my default has the columns like delta and cumulative bytes the other one I have is the absolute date and time so let's go ahead and double click on that so the reason why I have the absolute date and clock time is because I get traces from all over the place and I want to make sure that I'm troubleshooting at the right timeline right time frame and the right date it sounds trivial but every one of us all those experienced troubleshooter will know that you'll go through a trace only to find out oh sorry that was the wrong date okay it's simple enough um, but at the same time I don't want it taking up real estate on my screen so this is a quick check that I can do I hit control shift a again once more and I can go back to my default and start my troubleshooting okay so what's the third one so this one is um, what I called so let me show that to you again absolute date and time and sequence numbers okay so by default TCP sequence numbers are relative and in fact let me show you that by going to preferences bring it into view under protocol scroll down to TCP and the relative sequence numbers here will be checked by default so in this configuration profile I unchecked it and the reason for that is twofold one when you're working with traces that start from a different timeline so in other words uh, packet trace was started 10 seconds at one site and another uh, the other end it was started 10 15 seconds later the relative sequence numbers are going to, are not going to match up right because relative sequence numbers are just that it's relative to the first packet that it saw in the trace file and it may not it may throw you off um, when you're troubleshooting packets with two different uh, locations okay so notice what happens is when you let me expose the middle pane here in this trace I have the normal 32-bit sequence numbers that you're used to so why do I not use this because it's you know tr humans in general have a hard time keeping track of numbers this size or this length okay now compare and contrast this with my default profile which uses a relative sequence number and it's 69,343 okay it's much easier on the eye it's easier to find things that jump things that go missing if you will uh, so if you have a one-sided trace file or you're analyzing using relative sequence numbers is the preferred method but again where network address translation NATs or packets from two different locations are involved I almost always use real sequence numbers um, to keep track of the timeline the other one here is uh, IP ID so why do I have this well IP ID is one of those things that are often forgotten about and you see the column here I added this column and if I go down to the IP ID uh, it matches up with this okay it's represented in hex but it's not really um, an issue and you can see here that the IP ID increments by one in hex and this is a sometimes this can be a good indicator of uh, troubleshooting and in and in future sessions I'll show you a case where IP ID played a critical role in determining root cause okay again um, IP ID is not needed all the time so to save on real estate I usually have that turned off uh, but it's kind of a pain to add you know add column so by the way how do you add this column so this started uh, in the newer feature releases of Wireshark but all you have to do is click on a particular field right click and say apply as column okay any field you can click on and say apply as a column and when you do uh, it'll show up towards the end typically and then you can relocate it to where it makes sense for you 
Okay, but again, this takes up valuable real estate on my screen. So by default, I turn it off. Okay, so um, that wasn't, notice we didn't go into any protocol analysis today, but this was just a intro to set up your environment so that it makes sense to you. Your eyes get trained to specific parts of the screen, uh, etc. the columns, and it's very important to get into a habit where you look at things in a common location, uh, at the common fields, etc. And, and this is all the process of training your eye to pick up on deltas or things that look abnormal. Okay, uh, And in future sessions, I'll show you how reckon, being able to recognize differences in a trace quickly can be the difference between finding root cause or just needlessly doing analysis um, without being able to identify the root cause. Okay, so hopefully you found this useful. In the next upcoming sessions, we'll actually start the protocol analysis piece and uh, start to get into um, the, your traditional troubleshooting. Thank you, and if you have any comments, I can be reached via email at hansang.bay at riverbed.com. Thank you.